Hello everybody, uh, my name is Kanan Jones uh, and I'll be presenting a paper which I've co-authored with Dr. Marie de Vidova. Um, and it's a discussion about the integration of uh, food cultivating units uh, and living spaces. Uh, the basic background to this is that there is a growing disconnect between uh, the production of, of food which tends to be rural and the uh, consumption of food which tends to be urban. Uh, that disconnect needs to be addressed um, so that we have more resilience in terms of food production and distribution um, and uh, to reduce the insecurities um, that are ingrained in the system. I'd like to start with this uh, quotation which is quite uh, significant. Food is an internationally traded commodity, which, by the way, can be eaten. So we're talking about a commodity, a global commodity that is traded. Um, so we need to revisit that opinion um, so that food takes its proper place uh, in, in our lives. What we have is a biotechnological approach to indoor mushroom cultivation. We have to cultivate indoors so that we can control the, um, the environment, uh, air quality, water, and uh, temperature and light. It's a system that integrates food cultivation with living spaces. The system is based on converted shipping containers and they can be sited almost anywhere. This is what it looks like. These are a couple of containers um, which are sited uh, on, on my farmyard. Um, as you can see, they don't look much from the outside, but they're basically uh, metal boxes where we can control the environments. Why are we doing this? Um, well, there are challenges for food um, production, distribution uh, and consumption uh, these days. And there are various new economic models that are addressing this. For example, the circular economy, foundational economy, there are approaches to sustainable food production, and there is a very large issue of food security. Now, the system that I have developed um, addresses all these points. And of course, things have been brought into sharp focus by the pandemic, which has clearly shown uh, how weak the distribution channels are, and the supply chains are for food on a global scale. Let's look at the circular economy first. Circular economy is uh, completely different from the traditional linear economy. Linear economy, we take raw materials, we make something with them or we use them, we dispose them, and then we pollute. So it's very true in terms of food as well as other uh, materials. In the circular economy, we get the most out of the resources, we recover and regenerate products at the end of their service life. So we don't make use and dispose, we make use, we use, we make, we cycle. Uh, system we've developed uh, as perfect fit for this. Foundational economy. Foundational economy is based on community needs. The economy is built on community needs and not the commercially perceived wants of that community. And the basic needs are basic rights to food, health, safety, and services at a community level. Again, our system fits well with these concepts. Sustainability in food production, as I said earlier, has been brought into sharp focus by the pandemic. But here's just a small example of the number of food miles that fruit travel to get to the UK. So as you can see, we're talking thousands of miles by air, by boat, uh, and by road. Um, and that's a significant um, carbon footprint. But there's more to sustainable food production than, uh, than uh, a carbon footprint. We're talking of sustainable production methods. We need to look at sustainable energy use. We need to look at availability of growing medium and land. And of course, we need availability of labor to actually um, harvest. Uh, and, and process the food. And all these issues uh, have been brought into focus not only by the pandemic, but also by the insecurities raised by Brexit. 
As far as food security is concerned, this slide shows the journey from food insecurity to security, and it basically uh, involves localizing food production and distribution, and it involves education, um, and it involves community-based approaches, um, so that we move from a situation where there are emergency food assistance is needed to um, a situation where food is produced locally. Two key words as far as security is concerned is food availability and resilience. Resilience to, um, uh, to uh, be able to get over um, pandemics or, or any other natural disasters. What are we talking about? We're talking about shiitake and root oyster mushrooms. Um, these are the mushrooms that are grown within the growing units. Um, and I've chosen these because they are some of the most nutritious uh, mushrooms available. And they grow very well within the system we've developed. Here's the process. This is inside one of the fruiting containers. You can see that there are a number of blocks uh, if you look closely, uh, with mushrooms growing out of them. We make the blocks from wood chip, sustainable sources, um, and they, they are in inoculated with the, in this case, shiitake mushroom spawn. This is germinating spores, and by manipulating the conditions, we're getting the, 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 the mushrooms to actually fruit. Here's a close-up of some of the blocks with some very nice shiitake mushrooms growing. So the process involves inoculation of uh, growing substrate, which is wood chip and sawdust, incubation so that the, uh, the mushroom mycelium uh, colonize the substrate, and then fruiting and cultivation and harvesting. Fresh mushrooms have a, a seven day shelf life in the chiller, but by actually drying the mushrooms, which is a very easy um, process, we can actually uh, increase the shelf life, we can actually um, concentrate the nutrition, uh, nutritional value within the mushrooms and if there are surpluses um, they can be packaged and sold to create an income stream. Um, so uh, all in all it's adding value and avoiding waste. So shiitake mushrooms, just a quick look at some of the nutritional values. Um, Important here to look at these are dried mushrooms, by the way. Protein content 16%, uh, very low fat, um, zero sugar content. So it's, it's a healthy, healthy food. Um, and that protein figure is it's pretty high, um, it's actually higher than some processed meats. Similarly, with the wood oyster mushrooms, again, low fat, uh, low carbohydrates and sugars, and very high protein. So what's special about the system? Well, as I said, it's based on 24 shipping containers, manageable scale, it's energy efficient, um, and produce quality nutritious mushrooms. Um, we've actually been able to increase the vitamin D content of the mushrooms in the system by manipulating um, light mainly uh, to uh, increase vitamin D content by a uh, factor of three. Let's look at some case studies to show how versatile the system is. Um, this is the case study number one. This is my growing unit, um, which has been developed over 15 years. It's the original um, prototype, fully functional prototype. It can yield up to 200 kilos of shiitake or oyster mushrooms a week, which is quite a lot. It's enough to feed us as a family and to um, to sell on to local restaurants and, uh, and delis and also to dry mushrooms. It's currently the basis of research into improving the energy efficiency of the system and to improve the nutritional value of the mushrooms. So this is our own family-based uh, growing unit. Case study two, um, I was approached by a, a carbon zero hotel in Northumberland um, to see if we could establish a, a mushroom growing unit on there premises. They actually grow all their own fruit and veg and they source products as locally as possible. Uh, and the, the mushroom garden system, uh, which is a shipping container um, with uh, converted to grow the shiitake and oyster mushrooms, fits in well within their um, 
in their gardens and they have a supply of nutritious fresh mushrooms for the year. Um, they're firmly based in the local community, sourcing food locally and supplying uh, food to local customers. Case 33 is, is a different situation. This is based in just outside Bridge End, uh, post industrial community, uh, urban setting, and it's a social enterprise for people with learning challenges. The project op operates a market garden and a farm shop. And again, we were approached to see if we could establish a mushroom growing unit in the market garden, uh, which we have done. And a couple of weeks ago, we got the first crop. Um, not only does it provide nutritious food all the year round in terms of the mushrooms, but it also provides um, amazing training opportunity and new skills to workers and trainees. And uh, it helps to educate the trainees and the staff and also the local community as to how food is produced. And you can see the whole chain from production to distribution to consumption all within the same community. So let's relate the case studies to the four headings we had earlier on. The circular economy, foundational economy, sustainable food production and food security. Well, as far as the circular economy is concerned, uh, the substrate to grow the mushrooms is waste wood um, from uh, sustainable coppicing uh, or sustainable uh, tree surgery. Um, waste wood is used to grow the mushrooms and when it is spent, um, it is returned to the, to the soil as a mulch or compost to farmers or gardeners. They just come and pick it up locally. As far as the foundational economy is concerned, food is a basic need. Um, using our system, it can be produced and consumed in the same community. So providing a basic need within that community. It's a sustainable system. Uh, almost no waste is produced. Um, low energy requirements and uh, low skilled labor processes. Um, so again, it can be uh, operated by a family, by a community, a social enterprise. Um, without any need for high-tech training. Um, as far as food security is concerned, well, because it is sited within communities, within living areas, to very low food miles and the supply chain, it's very short. So that increases security and, and resilience uh, uh, in terms of food production. So in conclusion, the current system for producing, distributing and consuming food needs a major rethink. Um, the new economic models help to address the challenges. Um, we have to fix the disconnect between the mainly rural food production and the mainly urban and city-based food consumption, uh, especially as it's projected over the next 30 years that a very high percentage of the world population will be living in cities and urban areas. Some suggest as much as 80%. So we have to fix that disconnect. And the system we have is robust, efficient and manageable, and it's adaptable for any situations, but specifically urban situations, and can also be used in rural situations, like for example, where there is need for um, sustainable food production. Applications, well, it can be applied, as we've seen from the case studies, uh, integrated into living, and food producing environments um, it can be placed in, uh, in personal property, it can be placed in community uh, um, property, communal areas such as courtyards, um, fits in well in parks and gardens, um, can be put into redundant buildings, um, uh, horizontal farms, hydroponic farms, and as I said, it functions in both rural and built environments basic needs, um, it's a very simple kit in, in the containers and they need single phase electricity and uh, water supply. Well, thank you. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, so if there are any questions, I'm, I'm available here to take them. Thank you very much.